my check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play! Good morning. Good morning. As you can tell, we had a great two days of VBS. We had about 52 kids registered, and about each one of them showed up each day. They got a mix of Bible study, music, um, missions, snack time, one of the most important. We did an opening and closing rally. Our offering this year, it went to the Rwanda Challenge. We set a goal for $600 to cover one student for one semester, and based on people who have said they will turn in money to me, we will meet the $600 goal. So, woo -hoo. So it was a great week, and we look forward to doing it next year. Welcome, uh, welcome to Town South this morning. Won't you please stand and join us in worship this morning? i mm -hmm. 
sing a little louder. 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 Please pray with me. God, we come before you now uh, with our tithes and our offerings. We know that you don't need them, God. What you want is our hearts. So we come to you joyfully today with our giving because you have our hearts, God. We love you and we can't thank you for all that you've done for us. We can't thank you enough. It's in your name we pray. Amen. As we continue to worship this morning, won't you please stand and continue singing with us? When the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me, there was another in the waters, holding back the seeds. Should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free? There is a cross that bears the burden, where another died for me. There is another in the fire. Should I ask? 
Good morning. As we move into this time of communion, I just want us to, I kind of view it like a past, present, future type deal. Um, in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four, you know, he says, this is my body, which is for you. Do it in remembrance of me. We remember, you know, his body broken, his blood shed, just the miracles work. Also, he could come and save our lives and bring us closer to him. In present terms, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty seven through 28, it calls us to reflect on our hearts because you want to take communion in the right spirit, in the right mind, in the right, right, right body, sorry. Uh, you want to make sure you're walking with the Lord. He calls us to do that. And in the future, he says he's not going to partake of this supper until we're with him in heaven again. And that's a means of rejoice because we know that we have that to look forward to where we get to eat with our Father in heaven at his table that has room for everybody in this room, everybody out of this room, if they'll just call upon his name and be saved. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just thank you for everyone that's here this morning, Lord. Uh, we pray over this communion time, God, that you just allow everyone to reflect on their hearts, God. You just allow them just to get right, just to be with you, Father, and just really partake fully in this moment. 
God, we pray you be with the rest of the service, Lord. If there's a heart here that doesn't know you, Lord, that the message just touches them, God, and just brings them to you, Father. And we thank you for everything you bless us with. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Town South. We're glad you guys are here to worship with us this morning. If you're new here, stop at our I'm New Here station out in the lobby. We have a gift for you. We also have a card we'd like you to fill out just so we can connect with you better. Also, if you're new, we have this class called Starting Point. This is a 30-minute crash course on Town South. It's a little bit about who we are, what we believe. If you'd like to get connected, it's a great place to start. Now stick around for a few more announcements. I just want to take a moment and say thank you to all who helped out with VBS and made it such a success this past Friday and Saturday. Thank you to all our volunteers who did such a wonderful job each day interacting with the kids. And man, we had a great time. VBS was booming. But also, I want to say thank you to the kids who came out and had a great time. We hope to see you soon, and we can't wait to do VBS again next year. There's lots of neat things coming up for our church family to be a part of. And coming up on August 19th is our Climbing Higher Prom. Climbing Higher Ministries is an organization that serves and ministers to adults with developmental and mental delays. And they have a prom every year. And this is going to be our first prom back since COVID. And we are very excited to host it here at the church building again on August 19th. So this is a really cool way to serve. And so if you would like to, check out the app and sign up. On Sunday, August 21st, it's our Sunday on the river back at the campus of Mid-Atlantic Christian University. This is going to start at 4 o'clock. We are going to have an assortment of food trucks and an ice cream truck. We're going to have boats and lots of cool games. And this is going to be a great time of fellowship and spending time together. So mark your calendars for August 21st from 4 to 7 p.m. On Friday, August 26th, we're having our Back to School Bash, and this is for all grades, K through 12th grade, and we're going to be here on our campus uh, celebrating the new school year and kicking it off right. So we want to invite you to come out and have a good time with us. And the last thing we want to mention this morning is our Parent Summit coming up on September 10th. It's a Saturday. We want to encourage all you that are parents right now to go ahead and sign up for this event. It's going to be a great morning together. It's going to be from 9 to 12. Lunch will be provided and so will child care. And all you got to do is sign up ahead of time and it's going to be great. So check out the app, check out the bulletin, and sign up as soon as you can. We've been in our summer season and we've had a bunch of guest speakers coming in and sharing God's word with us and it's been a great summer so far. And today we have a repeat offender. And so we're going to spend some time with Dennis. So direct your attention to the stage as we do so. How are we doing? We have the repeat offender here with us. And uh, this is Dennis. And he was here two weeks Two weeks, ago, two weeks ago, and uh, he spent a Sunday morning with us, and he is back again, and so thanks for coming back, man. I didn't think you would after my, last time. My pleasure. 
Yeah, and so we're thankful for you, man. And uh, last time we got to know Dennis a little bit, uh, and this morning we just wanted to get him, get to know him a little bit better. Uh, and so I asked you to just to send me three things about yourself. And uh, what I noticed is just three things, but one of them just doesn't happen to be true. All right, and so I'm not calling him a liar, but uh, it's just not true, right? That doesn't make sense. And so uh, here they are. There's the three things that you sent me. All right, and so there's three things about you. Uh, the first one, when we lived in Jarvisbury, one of my day off activities was spending the day on the Albemarle Sound on Debbie's boat. Keep track. You can help me out to figure out which one is not true, y'all, okay? When I was young and single, girls would just come up to me and say, you look like Bruce Jenner. <laughs> so, the old Bruce. Okay. <laughs> I only have the new one in my head, so. All right. And then the last one, I have never seen a Harry Potter, I was supposed to be never. I have yep. never seen. Oh, they fixed, fixed it. That they already. fixed it. Okay. You're I have never seen guy. a Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, or Marvel movie. All right. And so a lot of people just looked at you and judged you in their heads <laughs> on that last one. All right. And so I don't know. Which one do you guys think? First one, second, or third? Hope a number. A number. Which one? Which one is the lie? Which one's the lie? I see a two. I see a three. Lots of threes. Lots of threes. I see a two. There's a couple having different answers over there. I don't know. I see a two. Okay. And so I'm going to go. I'm going to go one, and if I'm right, I heard you're buying lunch, all right? So which one is not true? One is definitely true. That one is true? One is true. 80-degree day, Debbie's got a new boat. Not new, but it's old, but it's new to her. We're living in the Albemarle Sound in Currituck County. We take off, head down to... A dear friend of ours at Jarvisburg, Carl Davis, had the Coin Jot Marina. Drive down, 20 minutes, perfectly calm seas, got an ice cream. Almoral Sound can be dangerous. On the way back, the clouds came in, the wind started blowing, and it was like Jesus and the disciples on the water. I was screaming like a baby, thought I was going to die. Water come, boat coming out of the water, smacking down. I was so glad to get back home. So I worked in the yard and played around my pool. Debbie went out on the boat. Well, that story had such a pleasant start, and I was super into it. And then I was like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, plot twist. All right. All right, and so the second one, so Bruce Jenner, huh? Well, we were young. This was before I was a Christian. So we were smart. We thought we were smart. And clubs and bars always had a ladies' night. So naturally, we would go on ladies' night. And in the bars, the girls would come up. And I was in shape back then. And girls would come up and say, you know, you look like Bruce Jenner. And I said, oh, certainly. Uh, he's my cousin. <laughs> You'd do anything to get a date. All right, Bruce Jenner, look at that. All right, and the but last one. But if you one... want to call me Denise, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, I don't even know if I want to talk about the last one. I, can't, I really can't believe it. All right, and so Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, or Marvel, nothing. I'm not else. a big movie guy. Okay, fair I enough. Just, fair enough. You know, I think I did see one Star Wars, the original one, but I'm just not in the, in the movies too All much. All right, and so comic books, have you heard of those? You done those? We had comic books when I was a kid. Oh, okay. It had a lot, of, a lot of the Marvel. What was the other one? There were Marvel, and what's the other one? DC. 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 We had a lot right, of those. Right, right. I had comic books. I wish I would have kept them. He, he said to me before that uh, he remembers when the comic books came out. And I was just like, there was a time when comic books didn't exist. I think it might have come exist. out a little bit before me, but, yeah, that's, that's but a, I was born in 1953, so I was uh, getting so many young right, right. Yeah, yeah, I understand. That's a long, uh, it's just a long time ago. It's hard to uh, power no, to fathom. Where's it? Right. You got a store? You got a store up here for me? <laughs> I got a walker. We have a walker Two up here. Services right. are ridiculous. Well, hey, man, again, thanks for being here. We are... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here, and uh, I'm glad, we're grateful that you're going to share a message with us this morning. This morning. And so I'd like to pray for you as we do so. Yes, I was praying for you this morning, y'all. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for us to be able to gather here and to be able to worship you uh, through the songs that uh, we, we sang to you. And we just thank you for Dennis being here, willing to serve you and to share a message uh, from God's word, from your word to us. And I just pray that our hearts and minds are open to what he has to say and that uh, you have a message for us this morning, Lord. Uh, we thank you for everything you do for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If I ever come back again, I'll wear a Captain America t-shirt. <laughs> Anybody know what this red, white, and blue card is? It's given out by the government. What is that? You know what that Medicare card means? It means I'm old. 
<laughs> and if I was smart enough, I would have wore a seersucker jacket today, just like my friend Bill Griffin. <laughs> that would have proved that would have proved I was old. <laughs> I should have brought that thing. That would have been funny. I could have said it right here in the back, in the bag. Now I was not. Um, I was not always this decrepit. You know, there was a time I was young and vibrant. Uh, uh, loved sports. Played all kind of uh, sports growing up. I mean, I was told you before I was a big Oriole and Colt fan. So I had the the Brooks Robinson jersey and the the greatest gift I ever got and received was when I was probably eight or nine, I got a full Colt uniform, Baltimore Colt uniform, and I wore that thing till it fell, fell apart. But I loved sports, and as we got older, we lived in Maryland, so we'd go up to Pennsylvania and go snowmobiling and started to ski, skied the mountains there, then graduated to, as we got older and started working up into New Hampshire and Vermont, then out west, and Loved to ski, so I mean, I wasn't a, a adrenaline junkie, but I was just young and vibrant, and and just loved the thrill of life. But um, as you get older, things change. You know, with this body, I can't do what what I used to be able to do. So you might be thinking, you know, I wonder with that body what he does do. Well, not much anymore. I mean, this is a. This is not a Planet Fitness body. This is body built by Golden Corral. <laughs> so I work in the yard, and our yard's not that big. Debbie and I every morning take our dog for a walk. Greenville, has, Greenville, North Carolina has wonderful parks, and we walk him through the trails and enjoy that. I play a little golf, beat Tim Turner every, every now and then. And my hobby now is just reading church signs. And some are really just so cute. Aspire to inspire before you retire. Give the devil an inch and he'll become your ruler. And one I'd like to was try our Sundays. They're better than Dairy Queen. You've probably all seen that one. <laughs> some are very sarcastic. Forgive your enemies. It messes with their head. <laughs> this, I love this one. Honk if you love Jesus. Text while driving and you'll meet him. <laughs> Some just have a great message. It's hard to stumble when you're on your knees. And I think my favorite is, nails didn't keep Jesus on the cross, love did. Now this morning, I'm going to talk about a church sign I want you to always have out here at Town South. And it's, y'all come in one way. Now think about it, they're on total opposite polar ends of the spectrum. One is the most inclusive message in all the world, y'all come. And the other is the most exclusive message in the entire world. Well, you can come, but there's only one way. So let's look at the first part of that sign, y'all come. Now, y'all is a term I came to love while preaching in the South in Jarvisburg, North Carolina. Now, we grew up, I told you, grew up in Baltimore, and Baltimore's right on the Mason-Dixon line. So, you know, when the Rebs came up, we go right on just to be able to live. And when the Yankees came down from the north, we went right on. So we were just on that border line, the Mason-Dixon line. And uh, there was a lot this quasi-Yankee had to learn when he started preaching in Jarvisburg. I had no idea that the first day of hunting season was a nat national religious holiday in Currituck, North Carolina. I looked around, where's all the guys today? It was the same thing with the Daytona 500. I said, Bubba, stand up one Sunday. And three men, a kid, and a lady stood up. <laughs> My first month preaching there, we had a lot of old ladies, and I loved our old ladies. Miss Lizzie was so precious. But one of them came up to me, blue hair, you know, and she said, honey, would you give me some sugar? I ran down to the kitchen, got a few packs of sugar, come running back up to her. She said, honey, all I wanted was a peck on the cheek. <laughs> Faked her out. I bent her over and gave her a big one. <laughs> Better get back to the sermon. First sign is y'all come. It's the most inclusive message in all the world. 
because church is for everyone. Can I hear an amen? The church is for all people, and y'all need to come. Y'all need to keep coming. And y'all need to get the world and bring them in so that they can come and know the blessing nature of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Church is for everyone, and the church has always been expected to grow. I mean, it's got the greatest message in all the world. We're sinners. We know we're sick. We know there's something wrong with us. And when you can hear the message of grace and you can hear the message of God's plan for our life to live a better life than what the world could, could give us or what we could think up ourselves, you know, that's the message for the ages. And the famous text that we all know so well growing up in a restoration movement church is, is Acts chapter 2, verse 36 and following. And this is the first gospel sermon that was ever preached in the world. So if you ever want to know about salvation, if you ever want to know about God's love for you, go back to the book of Acts and, and study it, learn it, but listen to the first message of salvation that was ever given. Peter said, therefore, and, and he said many other words before this, condemning Israel for their lack of faith. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. He was leaving no doubt that Jesus is the man. When the people heard this, they were cut to their hearts and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? I mean, they weren't waiting for an invitation Him, The word of God cut through their heart and they knew right away, we killed the Messiah. What do we do? We need, we need some saving grace. Peter replied, well, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit came on David at times in the Old Testament. It would come on men in the Old Testament to carry out a mission that God would have for him. But this was the Holy Spirit indwelling believers who were leaving Judaism and coming to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And listen to what he says. This promise is for you and it's for your children and all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them. Save yourself from this corrupt generation. Well, what generation was he talking about? He was talking about Israel. And he was talking about the mess that the Pharisees and Sadducees made of the glory of the Old Testament. And he, he knew they were condemned. Jesus said they, the Pharisees were putting burdens on people. He said those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. See, Acts is all about regime change. You know, you're going from the old covenant to the new covenant. And the old covenant was necessary, but it all pointed to Jesus. And it was showing them that they needed, the sacrifice needed to be made so that man could have a relationship with God. So we're going from the old to the new, from law to grace. And it was a beautiful thing that was happening as God's plan for the ages was coming about. And Bill Griffin taught us in uh, Restoration History, Alexander Campbell, one of the great fathers of the Restoration Movement, he preached a sermon called the Sermon on the Law. And it's cool. You, you need to go back and read that sometime. And he talked about this new age. And he said the Old Testament was kind of like the starlight age. And that was the patriarchs because they were speaking forth God's word, but it was just in little glimmers, just in little bits. Now, and a lot of times they didn't understand it all, but God was starting to speak. And then he brought forth the Mosaic age where we got the law of Moses as he got the law in Sinai. And that was adding more light from God to the ages so man would know how to live and prosper in him as they got 
the law. And that was just a little bit more light, like moonlight. I mean, the moon doesn't have light itself. It reflects light, but that is how he mentioned it. And then it was the sunlight age, the age where the Christ would dawn and the age where the sun would rise, not the physical sun, but the son of God, the Messiah who would take away the sins of the world. And that's what's all coming about in this glorious book of Acts, this new thing called the church, this new thing that would bring God's people into into a proper relationship with him. And he says, this message is for you. It's individual growth that would come through the church for everyone who would hear the word of God and repent and be baptized into him and added into the kingdom of God. Aren't you glad that you heard the glorious message of the gospel and were saved? Aren't you delighted about that? For you. And think about what God was doing when he thought of you and your salvation. It gives me chills. Because people in in Baltimore, now I preach in Currituck County for 25 years, so four years ago we retired to go to Greenville and uh, bug Tim Turner for the rest of my life. It, it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a rural county, it's a small county, but, but uh, I preached there for 25 years and I loved living there, loved the people of God, loved the church at Jarvisburg, poured my life into it. But back then, People in Baltimore take one vacation a year generally. That was way back then, 40 years ago. And you'd either go to the mountains or you'd go to Ocean City. We call it going down the ocean. But my friend Brian and Kathy, they said, why don't we go to the Outer Banks one year? And we said, all right, we'll go. Three hours to Baltimore. Why would we drive six hours to Nags Head? Didn't make sense, but we'd give it a try. So we did. And we came down through Baltimore, we came down through Norfolk, came down through Currituck County, leading through Jarvisburg and Powell's Point, Kitty Hawk, got to our place in Southern Shores. And we just partied all week. That's what people on vacation do when they have a worldly mindset. And show you how worldly uh, I was, and not to mention this to glorify sin, but to show the glory of the gospel and the transformation power over sin. I mean, my friend Brian, we had a couple cases of beer in the car, and we made up what was called kamikazes. I think it was gym, lime juice, and triple sec. And we had a couple joints, and Debbie and, and Kathy were going shopping that day, and Brian and I, in our stupid, deluded minds, we're going to take all this stuff and drive an hour and a half down to, to uh, Hatteras, and climb the lighthouse. Shows you how demented sinful minds are. So we did that. We drove back and finished our week's vacation. And driving back, now think about the providence of God for my life. We're driving back past Kitty Hawk, past Powell's Point. I drove right past the Jarvisburg Church of Christ. God knew that many years later, this sinful dentist would be renewed in Ocean View, Delaware, would be born again. And he knew at that time he needed to take me out of the kingdom of darkness, put me into the kingdom of light so I could learn the gospel that this message was for you, it was for me. And then I'd end up in Roanoke Bible College and then end up preaching at Jarvisburg Church of Christ for 25 years. That's the glory of God when it says this gospel is for you because you have a message, you have a testimony. God's planning something better for you than you could ever plan for yourself. And that's just the individual growth that we have. We learn to live in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Our sins are forgiven. Can you say amen? We live with the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. God says the thief comes to still kill and destroy, but I come to have life 
and have it abundantly. And with the Holy Spirit, that abundance can be yours. And we live not only with worldly knowledge now, but we live with divine guidance. And we have an eternal perspective that just covers all of our lives and, and guides us. I know I'm saved. I know I'm a child of God. I know I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And I'm a member of the Lord's church that meets wherever I go. And the Lord's Supper and the truth is taught each and every week. And we're an heir of God. And we're, we're more than conquerors. And we're supposed to be ambassadors for Christ. And that's what it's individual growth. God says this glorious message that Peter preached is for you. And I pray you've come to know him as Lord and Savior. But then he says, even better yet, it's not just for you, it's for your children. And my daughter was born when we were at Roanoke Bible College. Debbie and I, we were married 12 years, didn't have kids. We stopped trying, but using protection, thought, well, you know, if it happens, it happens. And it never did. As soon as we get to Bible college, Debbie's pregnant. <laughs> she comes home saying, I'm really tired. I said, yeah, you know, suck it up, girl. You know, get, get, go, go to work. She come home, I'm really, really tired. I said, well, we're old. I was 36 going to Bible college. Debbie's 35. I said, it's, we're going through to change the life. Well, it was change the life. The Lord said, you need a kid. <laughs> this message is for you but it's for your children. It's biologic growth. God's grace is not only for you, but God planned for you to come to the Lord so that when you had children, you would teach them these glorious truths and you would model for them what abundant life looks like. This grace is not only for you, it's for your children, it's for your grandchildren. It's good news to be shared with the family. It's how the faith is to be perpetuated. When God looked at Adam and he said, be fruitful and multiply, and I bet Adam went, yes, Lord, thank you, Jesus. You know, that's a good, that's a good first message for your work, be fruitful and multiply. So that's for you too. God gave you children, and your main job as parents is to return them back to him. He'll give you them for 18 years, but your main responsibility is to teach them the truths of God and to get them loving a dynamic church just like the one here at Town South. And this is what he says in Deuteronomy 6, 1 through 8. These are the commands, decrees, and law the Lord our God directed me to teach you and deserve in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess so that you and your children and their children after them may fear the Lord, your God, as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you. And so that you may enjoy a long life. Hear, bless you, hear Israel and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you that you may increase greatly in the land flowing with milk and honey just as the Lord, the God, your ancestors promised. And then what the leaders of Israel, and they did it in a legalistic way, but this was what they should recite every day. Hear, O Israel, it's called the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. And that's just a great statement of faith. It's a great statement that there's, one true God. There's one true God in this universe, and he's being revealed through Israel. And then he kind of gave the consequences of that. Because there's one true God, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commands that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Parents, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down, when you get up. What he's saying is, God talk should be everywhere in your house. You should be teaching your children everything. When you walk by a waterfall, you should be teaching about the glories of God. 
I saw the most glorious sunrise leaving the house about 6 o'clock this morning, and then it was just praising God's glory all over the skies. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. You know, the legalistic Pharisees took that as something, something they made it legalistic. They put phylacteries on their head and they tied all these prayer things around them. That's not what he's talking about. He's saying God needs to be the center of your life. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. You and your family need to be all about God. Let that sink in, because it may not be. It may be more about worldly things than God. Your family's calendar needs to resolve around God's calendar, not the other way around. Church should be the reason you miss other events, not the other way around. You are God's children. You are to impress the things of God on their lives so that they will carry on and teach that to their generation. And then the faith will be perpetuated in godless ages. And we're living in a godless age that needs you to be godly parents now more than ever. Your main responsibility is to impress the greatness of God on your children and grandchildren. Are you doing that? Salvation's for you, and it's for your children and grandchildren. But it's for everyone. This is ethnic growth. It says in verse 39, and for all the Lord our God will call for all, for all, who, are, for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. You know, we know the song, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Huh, that's not a song. No, it is. That's the heart of God. The whole world needs Jesus. Town South needs to reach out to the whole world. Yes, here in Elizabeth City, Pasquotank County, all the counties surrounding here, because you're a beacon of light in a lost and dying world. Now, walk down and look at all the missions that you support. You're doing a great job taking the message around the world. But this church needs to be for everybody, red and yellow, black and white. And I praise God, I've seen more ethnicity in this church than many churches in eastern North Carolina. You're doing what God intends. This church is for all. The teen, the, the, the rich and the middle class need to be comfortable here. The poor need to be comfortable here. People who look like us, that's fine when they come in, but people who don't look like us, they need to be welcome here. The teens who are tattooed look like their hair's on a point and they look like they fell into a tackle box. You need to love them. <laughs> Looks like some of the staff, I think. <laughs> the town drunk, Needs to be welcome here at Town South. The man struggling with sexual identity. They need to know that's not a proper way to live. Everyone needs to be welcome here at Town South. And I believe they are. Give yourself a hand. I think you're doing a great job with that. See, ethnic growth is at the very heart of God. That's why the church grew. It was 3,000 on the day of Pentecost, and it went to 5,000, then multitudes. said even the priests. Now think about that. You know, when, when the day of Pentecost came, it had come, and the church was born. The church began. If you were the high priest or a priest or a Levite, you had to make a decision. Am I going to keep my cushy job, or am I going to follow Jesus as Lord and Savior? And many came to be with the Lord. And we know the greatest verse in all of scripture in some people's mind, John 3, 16. Repeat it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. 
Because if you don't know Jesus, you're going to perish. And listen to verse 17. It echoes the world. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. That's God's highlighter. Like you're studying for a test, you highlight in your book. God's highlighting. He loves the world. And, and, and it's, uh, it says, in verse, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. God is the equal opportunity lovers, lover, and he loves you, and he loves your children, and he loves all who are far off. And this modern world is making a mess of our society. This modern world is so far away from God that we, they need to know what we know. Listen to what he says in John 3, 19. And this was the verse that I used at Jarvisburg when we started an area-wide men's rally. And we called the men's rally into the light. It says, this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, that's Jesus. But people love darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. That's where I was back when we were going to Nags Head. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that what may be seen may be plainly that what God has done and has been done in the sight of God. That old song, people need the Lord. Oh, they do. And you know how to handle them when they come. You have what the world needs. You have the gospel. You have a powerful church, a powerful message, a powerful platform to change this world. Now for the second part of the sign. That's easy. Yeah, everybody, and especially now that loves to preach, the, the God is love. And that's true. We just proved it. But God is not to be messed with. He says there's one way. Have the sign. Y'all come. But you got to put there's one way. Our postmodern Christian nation hates this part. And they're teaching your children in schools to hate this part too. They don't believe this generation doesn't believe in absolute truth. Anyone with a conservative mindset or a Christian worldview, they want to cancel because they hate that message, the message of Jesus. They will not tolerate a dogmatic statement that says there's only one way to heaven. But that's what Jesus, that's what Acts, the writer Luke would say in Acts 4.12. He wrote to the, to the Jews, and he wrote to that generation, that first generation that would follow Jesus. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Friends, Oprah's wrong. All roads don't lead to heaven. I've been to India, and I've seen their 300,000 gods that they worship. It's sad. I've been to Africa and I've seen the voodoo doctors and the witch doctors hammer the missionary in Togo, took Tim and I, and we were right there in a village where the witch doctor was, was putting curses on us as we were there trying to preach the good news of the gospel. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, but by me. Now, that's harsh. I said it was the most, y'all comes the most uh, uh, inclusive message in the world. Y'all come, but boy, there's, there's, there's a path to follow. And that path runs through the blood of Jesus Christ. There's only one way. Don't listen to the modern world that tells you you can do anything you want and get to heaven. There is one way, and that way is through Jesus. And the Greek word for name in the Bible is onoma. And it's used over and over and over in the book of Acts. Matter of fact, it's, it's like an echo effect 
through the book of Acts. She's 14 times in Acts 3 through 5. Just a few examples. Acts 2, 21. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Well, when we just read, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. In Acts 3, 6, Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk. And I love that chorus. That chorus that 40 years ago was splitting the churches. <laughs> it was modern choruses. It was called, there's something about that name. Sing it with me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. You cannot be neutral about the name of Jesus. You'll love it like we do, or you'll hate it because your sins are evil. But when you know your sins are evil, the glorious gospel is there for you, for your children, for all who are far off. Believe Jesus is the Messiah. Repent of your sins. Be immersed into Christ for the forgiveness of those sins. You can rise to walk in newness of life and live in the very presence with the Holy Spirit. God loves you. And he loves your children. And he loves the world. The only problem is there's only one way to avoid his judgment. And that is through the name of of Jesus Christ, the name that's above all names, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the most glorious name in all the world, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Love it, cherish it, impress it on your children. Say no to the world, say yes to God and the church and watch him deliver abundance into your existence in your children's existence, and the world's existence. What you're doing at Town South to me looks like a glorious work for God because you love God and you're teaching his word and you're making disciples. I've been hearing about your discipleship program and the small group program. They're designed to take you right out of the water of baptism where you're a brand new babe in Christ. They're designed to teach you and guide you in the spirit and guide you in the faith so that you will be a strong follower of Christ and strong followers of Christ teach their children and grandchildren and they pray for a lost world. John 8, 31, John said to the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching." You are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. There's nothing like living with freedom in a lost and dying world. There's nothing like living in abundance in a world that's trying to crush your soul. There's nothing like living with the spirit of God when the spirit of world is trying to quench you and to crush your faith. There's nothing like following the name of Jesus. So Jonathan, I want you to put a sign up out here. Y'all come in one way.
If you have a decision to make this morning, and I pray you will, this is your invitation time. We just don't sing a song just to close the service. I mean, we could just walk right out of here now. God's been glorified. The word's been preached. We've had the Lord's Supper. They didn't have a song on the day of Pentecost, but the word was preached. And the people knew they killed the Messiah and they knew they needed to repent and come to the Lord. If you have not done that, come. The baptistry's ready. If it isn't, we'll go down. We'll find water. There's plenty water around here. We'll baptize you this afternoon. If you need prayer, come. The world's hard. It's hard to live in this day and age in which we live. Come. If you're facing illness, come. Let the elders lay hands on you and and pray and anoint you with oil. If you need a hug, come. Jonathan will hug you. I'm all sweaty and I'm smelling myself already. Two services, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm too old for that. <laughs> if you have a decision, I encourage you right now, we're going to stand, we're going to sing a song. Feel free to come up. I would love to talk to you. Yeah. Feel free to stand with us and sing. I'm tired of standing. <laughs> out the wonder of life and as you speak a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath the planets form if the stars were made to worship so will I I can see your heart in everything you've made every burning star a signal fire of grace if creation sings your praises so will I
Man, man, what a song to kind of close out the service today, man. That's a powerful uh, song to sing to God. And, uh, man, as we wrap up today, if this is your first time hanging out with us, we're so grateful you're here and uh, that you could uh, spend a morning with us out in the lobby as a new here station. We'd love for you to stop by there and fill out a card for us and we can connect with you better. And also, if you're already a part of the family, we want to make sure you sign up for a small group. Uh, this is one of the best ways to stay connected to one another and to God is by being in a community together. Uh, to go from the rows to the circles, and we want to encourage you to do that as you leave today. You can also do it on the app. Uh, that will make it very easy for you. Um, and as we leave today, we have a big group of people that are starting another year of college. We have another, like, that are starting another year of, um, you know, how difficult it is sometimes to be a student and continuously uh, be in school, and a lot of them is their first year. It's going to be a freshman this year. And um, so, if you're restarting college this year, or you're going to be starting for the first time, could you just, if I talk to you, come on up, come on forward. Um, we just want to take a moment to acknowledge these guys and pray over them. A few of them are behind me. Oh, there you are. <laughs> you're like a ninja, man. All right. And so, uh, there's just a few of them. And uh, if if you're in this category and like coming up here is not a good thing. Totally cool. We want to pray for you too. Um, and so uh, transitioning from, you know, high school and those years going into college is, it's no easy task. And uh, as a church family, uh, we want to be praying over these guys, right? Some of you know this from experience, how difficult it was transitioning. Hey man, uh, how difficult it was transitioning from being a student, being in high school to adulthood and, and figuring this thing out. And so, uh, these are just some of the faces that make up that population for our church that we love so much. Uh, several of these guys are moving pretty far away and won't be with us every Sunday playing that thing or uh, using his voice to worship God with us. And so we're definitely going to miss that part 
of, of our Sunday services with these guys. And so as we leave this morning, we just want to pray for them. And uh, if you want to, come, come talk to them and, and encourage them and appreciate them a little bit as we close today. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for worshiping you, God. There's something about not worrying about what's going on in life and just putting you in your place and worshiping you and, and, and our, with our lives. And we just thank you for the opportunity to do so. We thank you for Dennis uh, being here and diving into your word. And I just pray that we are a church that welcomes all and uh, the challenges and the good and all the things that come along with being inclusive and loving people where they're at and loving on them the way you loved us. Lord, just be with us as we, we do that as a church family. And and God, I pray that uh, for these guys here with me on the stage and the ones that aren't here at the moment, I just pray for their next step as they start this journey of college and starting a new school year and all the things that are happening during this age and during this time, I just pray that they focus on you, stay connected to you, and uh, realize you are their God and that you love them. And I pray that they love you back with all the days of their life. And uh, just be with us as a church family as we love them back and, and put our arms around them. We love you, Lord, and thank you for everything you do for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a good week.